What's good everybody, my name is Valor and welcome back to Old School Messy Workbench Ovision because today we are taking a look at the X-Shot Pro Series Skins Long Shot. And that's not going to get confusing in the future when we're talking about all these blasters. <laughs> Alright, I have it out of the box. I'm going to have a play and let you know what I think. I've been playing with this thing for a little bit, and if you just came here for that TLDR, go get this thing right the frick now. At $30, the only other thing you're able to get that is this level of performance is going to be the Eon Pro, and that thing is just a slide prime pistol. Not a full-on bullpup rifle configuration blaster. Now, for those who want to stick around a little bit longer, as I showed in the unboxing, this thing does include both sizes of magazines, though you realistically do not want to use full-length darts with this blaster. Full-length darts do not do well at higher velocities. And in the interim of testing, I did make sure that this adapter is indeed wildcard. It can use all of your existing mags, talons, katanas, even the dart zone mags, just fine. Though it won't work with those original dart zone pro magazines that are a little bit too fat for katanas. When inserted into the blaster, the adapter gains a thumb release all the way up here. And it allows you to gravity drop your mags quite easily if you don't want to have to reach up with your thumb and grab the magazine. And yes, I tested and it will drop with every single magazine I tested. It even works with the 50 dart mythical drum. Though with the 50 dart mythical, you might want to have a slightly longer adapter on it so you can actually get this thing quite close to your body. For me, it's not much of an issue. Top rail on this blaster is Picatinny equivalent. It comes with these faux flip up sort of adjustable iron sights. The only adjustable thing on these sights is the front post, which you can lift up and down with a little thumb wheel. And yes, I did check the foregrip. Underneath the existing slanted vertical foregrip, which I quite like, it is very similar to the Magpul and Worker foregrips that you can get, there is a Picatinny style rail. Though, it is very hollowed out, so that does leave concerns for durability in the future. If you want a good look at how hollowed out that part is, here's a picture posted to Reddit a few days ago. I can't remember the actual poster's name. Unfortunately, I can't retrieve the name of the person who posted it because of the current Reddit protest blackout. So once that is up, I will try to find that person's name and put it into the description down below and also in the pinned comment. Only time will tell how durable it will be in the future. One thing a lot of people weren't able to realize until people got them in hand recently was that the stock is actually adjustable out to about three different positions and I feel that having the extension on the stock makes it a very comfortable blaster for someone who is about six feet tall. If you like wearing something like a chest rig you'll leave you'll want to leave it all the way collapsed but for just the average person using this it is very very comfortable. And for those wondering if the front muzzle is removable yes it is. You can remove both the flash hider and the extension. So you may not want to though, because this thing is rifled. It is the equivalent of a worker rifled muzzle attachment. And for those asking, yes, this thing is compatible with all existing Adventure Force and Dart Zone Max scar barrels. This is the AC Foamworks scar barrel. And I did have to put a little bit of tape on it because it did feel a little bit loose when I initially tried to use it, but with the tape, it is rock solid and it works quite well if you want a shorter muzzle break. So I didn't see too much difference between that and the original rifled muzzle. So I'll probably just leave this one on there unless I end up printing out one of those bearing scars because a bearing scar on this that would drop the FPS even less would be even better. And speaking of FPS, here you go. This first little bit was with the full length darts and the rifled muzzle on. So if you like playing HVZ, this might be a good option for you because it consistently hits that kind of 120, 130 FPS. It goes a little bit over sometimes, but if your HVZ will allow that kind of five FPS leeway, you should be fine. And with short darts, it rips. This thing hits even harder than a Nexus most times. Though a lot of these low shots that you're seeing here are just from me skimming the inside of a crony. And without the rifled muzzle, as you can see with the gray mag, it hits even harder, which I think is really good. 
I think that's mostly down to the fact that these darts are slightly, slightly lighter than the Adventure Force darts that you usually use. So you can kind of vary that a little bit just depending on what darts you use with this thing. And did I mention that this thing has slam fire? I know a lot of people will complain about the fact that it has slam fire so you can't really deprime it. But realistically, if you want to deprime the thing, you can easily just fire off your last dart. Or if you are about to dry fire, you can just stick your finger down the end of the barrel. And this thing does have a quite good seal. Not bad at all. But let me know what you think about this blaster down in the description below. Personally, I am very excited for what comes next from Zuru for their Pro line. Are you excited for this blaster? Are you gonna get one? Are you excited for what comes next from Zuru? Or do you already have one because you live in the UK and they were out there first? So any questions that you have down below, any comments, let me know. I want to hear from you. I love reading your comments. Big thanks to the patrons who are scrolling on the screen right now. As ever, my is Valor. Thanks for watching.